time to switch it up from the racing games I've been reviewing for the last week and jump into a remake of an old Neo Geo game, Splatterhouse. Released on November 23rd for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, Namco Bandai reboots their action horror series with great visuals and, well, that's about it. Just look for yourself. Here's Splatterhouse. Make a wish? Okay. I want us to be together until the end of the world. Splatterhouse is your classic, super cheesy, ultra cliched, horror movie made video game. You play Rick, a scrawny nerd looking dude who goes to visit your classic mad scientist in an evil mansion with his way too hot for his ugly ass girlfriend Jenny to do an interview or something and things go terribly wrong. The game opens with Rick in a pool of his own blood, fighting for his life, when a creepy talking mask convinces him to put it on and perform some deeds for it in return for bringing him back to life and saving Jenny. Upon putting it on, Rick's body mutates into a huge roid raging douche wad who has to do whatever the mask tells him. The mad scientist is trying to raise the dead, essentially to take over the world and reanimate his wife who died from cholera over 200 years ago, so Rick has to hunt him down, save his girl, and prevent the end of the world. Plus he needs to find out what this mask is, who it is, why it's talking to him, and what its motives are. Yeah, it's all pretty crazy. The way it's told is pretty interesting though, as the events that lead up to you lying dead on the floor in the beginning will be told to you through flashbacks as you travel between levels. There's even time and interdimensional travel and some pretty good plot twists that keep things interesting. While the story is really cheesy, at least it's enjoyable. Hey! Maybe one day I'll get one where you look like you're having fun. Dr. West? Dinner. The game's campaign on the easiest difficulty setting took me roughly 9 hours to complete. After that you could go back and play through it again on tougher difficulty settings, as there are some hidden things to collect like nudie pictures of Jenny, but I personally felt no desire to do so. There is no multiplayer in the title, but there is a survival arena mode that allows you to play a wave style survival match in various levels that you unlock along the way. The game even includes the three previous Splatterhouse titles from the Neo Geo and Sega Genesis that will unlock for you as you beat the missions, so at least you've got some additional things to do once you beat the campaign. Initially, I thought the loading screens were really cool. They show neat animations of some enemies that you fight along the way, but after a few of them I started to realize that they take an extremely long time to load. This may not have been an issue if some of the what seems like unfinished platforming mechanics weren't so unforgiving and some of the quick time events didn't lead to insta deaths. Seriously, the load times were freaking ridiculous. If you're going to be that unforgiving with the terrible platforming mechanics, you should at least instantly reload. Sitting around waiting for up to a minute at times and dying seconds later makes a guy want to break his freaking controller. What's worse is that the game froze up on me once and another time I had to reset it because every time it loaded the camera would get fixed pointing into a corner so I couldn't see what the hell was going on and just had to listen to Rick get his face raped by ghoulies. For the most part, the difficulty of the game wasn't too bad, but several of the final levels were just hard as shit. Some have to do with beating lots of enemies in short periods of time, killing tons of bosses at once, or keeping someone alive against a horde of monsters. Yes, it's doable, but not before my blood pressure rose all to hell. So there are some things I obviously didn't care for with Splatterhouse, but one thing I did like was the transition to 2D side-scrolling platform levels where you do simple sprints, jumps, rolls, and dodges. While some of the platforming was still crap, I found them to be infinitely more enjoyable than the regular 3D game. Splatterhouse is your basic action game with fast attack, slow attack, jump, dip, duck, dive, dodge, and well you know the rest. There's a wide variety of moves that you can unlock throughout the game as you gather experience from killing monsters, but really you just need to spam the crap out of slow and fast attack and you can pretty much defeat anything that gets thrown at you. When enemies get weak they'll start to glow red so that you can grab them and perform a gory splatter kill on it, which typically comes down to a short sequence of quick time events. There are a series of special moves that you can execute though that come in pretty handy right from the start of the game. 
One move converts your magic power into blood, which heals you, and a few others are powerful area attacks that one-shot most standard enemies. Your magic power meter regenerates over time by getting really bloody kills, so the bloodier you are with the enemies, the faster it will recharge. When it's full, you can unleash the full fear of the mask and transform Rick into some kind of creature that just destroys everything. While the combat can be kind of fun at times, it gets terribly repetitive quite early in the game. On top of that, there's no variety in the monsters that you fight. You'll fight the exact same enemies all the way to the end, especially the boss monsters. You'll probably fight each one of them at least 20 times. Some of the other mechanics I found to be broken. You often have to go into rooms with unlimited spawning monsters until you pick enough up and throw them at something like a spike, but most of the time it doesn't throw them in the right spot, so it just takes way longer than it needs to. It seems the developers wanted to extend the length of the game, so they just put repetitive, pointless, mind-numbing battles of infinitely spawning monsters to draw it out. Like the design and gameplay mechanics, the presentation of Splatterhouse has some highs and lows of its own. The graphics are beautiful and have kind of a comic book look and feel to them. It kind of reminds me of Borderlands or Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. I did have some frame rate problems at times, but there wasn't any screen tearing. The 3D portion of the game is plagued with heavy or death metal, which I'm not a fan of by any means, but the 2D portions have nice 80s horror movie music that maybe even has a Castlevania feel to it. Jim Cummings even does the voice acting for the Terror Mask, and he's fabulous, spouting out some pretty hilarious one-liners. But even with these good features, something just fell off with the game. The sound effects are very generic, and often the voice acting gets extremely quiet to the point where you can't even hear it. Something just felt missing from the game, it just doesn't all flow together. I don't know if it needs better controller vibrations, better animations or what, but it just felt amateur. I think it was because lots of the time, there's simply isn't sound effects where there should be, like I don't know, maybe when you're getting hit by an enemy? On top of all this, the camera's really wonky. The default position, or wherever it wants to put itself, is odd, and during several boss fights it just freaks out, essentially causing you to run in circles and ultimately to your own death. To me, this is a reboot that didn't need to happen, or if it did, more time just needed to be spent on it. Splatterhouse gets a bit more interesting around the fourth level when you get shotguns and chainsaws and fight some more interesting foes, but it really has some extreme lows and just a few highs. You'll feel like the game is decent for a bit, then it'll just suck ass for a few levels, then get better, then suck ass. The nine hours are mind-numbingly repetitive and unnecessarily hard at times. The sound effects, or lack thereof, really deter from the enjoyment that you could be having, and the extremely long loading times will piss anyone off. I'm guessing there will be a cult following, or some of you gamers that like death metal and bloody cliched gore will enjoy this, but this just wasn't a game for me. What are your thoughts? Leave your questions and comments below. Check out the full write-up and screenshots over at ZeitgeistGameReview.com. Stay up to date by following me on Twitter and Facebook, and make sure to check out all of the other great gaming entertainment on the Game Station. Don't forget to subscribe and press the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching.